Yeah. Call this meeting to order and document the time at 6.35. Uh, tonight we have uh, a special intro for our call to order. We're going to do the Star Spangled Banner. We have with us Lyndon Bronze Russo, Eliza Willis, and Anna Willis. Anytime you're ready, girls. Stand. edition of singing of the national anthem. I'm not going to go out on a limb, but I'm going to say we've got a new first place, you know, exactly. a new trend set. Here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the third. There was another JFK student who did it, uh, Thera, when we did the social thinking thing. Yeah. Very nice way to so anybody else who wants to do it, join us. That was great. Yes. That is not an easy song to sing. It's not. Yeah. It goes Just way low, up. Goes yeah. up. Yeah. 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 That was great. Uh, I'd like to uh, start with any agenda adjustments. Anybody sees in here or adjusting? Okay, and we'll move right into then the focus on learning. Twitter goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Tweeting right now. Are you now. tweeting? Okay. <laughs> Can someone teach me? Not how to fast tweet? enough. Somebody Are you needs to teach, us teach us how me to tweet text tonight? quicker. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah, Get two, those thumbs going. Two thumbs. Come on. Two thumbs is better. Is this going to be a lesson on the board chart? I'm, I'm, I'm not distracted. I'm I just watching the news <laughs> today show, and they do that whole hashtag thing for the government shutdown. And I'm like, I don't know how to do it, or I have some comments I would be putting <laughs> So what I wanted to show the, the board tonight was the Twitter feed that we've set up on the front of our website. Mm -hmm. And uh, Twitter has uh, a remarkable uh, um, number of ways that it can be used. Mm -hmm. And the first way, the first kind of phase of development that we're going to um, use it for at Winooski is just to show and share with the community all the great things that are happening uh, within the school community. And then additional phases after that would be uh, things like using it for communication of announcements and events and so forth. And then thirdly, for professional development. It's an outstanding professional development tool um, uh, for teachers, uh, also a learning tool for, for students. Uh, but we're starting with that first part and we'll progress as we go. Right now, I'm the, I'm the, the um, author or the, uh, uh, the person behind the Winooski Learns um, Twitter handle right now. Mm -hmm. And I've shared it with the staff, so they send me pictures when uh, things are happening in their classrooms, on field trips and activities. And uh, we post them in real time as, as, quick, as much as we can so that parents, community members, staff, students can then go on right onto the front of the website and they can see the great things that are happening uh, all in the school community. So I wanted to share just a few examples. So one example, high school art, and this had to do with our students going out and uh, uh, working on interpretations of beauty up close and working with a community partner, Sally's Flowers. 
This is from the iLab acceptance night, one of the students' learning goals around understanding how Korea influences China uh, mm -hmm. through music by looking at economic reports and, and other uh, pieces of information. Mm -hmm. That's a sophisticated question. Very. Uh, we had students who were running the cash register for the Scholastic Fair, uh, selling books to their fellow students. We had uh, some sharp-looking young men here uh, who were dressed up for mock job interviews, and we had uh, business people from the community coming in and interviewing them. I think you got a job. I hope it's not a mock job. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, another uh, instance of uh, um, recognizing some of the adults in our community, Betsy Dubuque, who is uh, um, the middle school and high school administrative assistant, and she was awarded by the principal, Leon Wheeler, with Inspiring Educator of the Month. Some art from the high school, again. And last week, there was a uh, STARS dance party celebration in the cafeteria. Uh, as the students are uh, moving towards <laughs> earning their stars with uh, uh, performing as much expected behavior as they can and having lots of green thoughts through the social thinking curriculum. Something happens when they get to 20,000. Yes. What, is it? what happens when you get to 20,000? We do um, a school-wide celebration. A school-wide celebration. And here's one of me um, being taught by one of the high school students how to uh, shoot a bow and arrow this week. How'd you do? I did all right. Good teacher. One huh? for two. I hit the target once and sent one flying. The other piece that I wanted to show people was with uh, Twitter and then another uh, application called Flipboard, which, uh, which is a way that you can organize some of your social media and some of your news uh, applications, you can create what's called magazines. And so I'm in the process of creating an education weekly for our staff, and this is an example of it. So I can grab articles, links, and so forth from different, um, uh, different originators, different authors, and then I can put them into a single magazine so that there's a focus um, on some of the issues that we're working on in Winooski, and then I can share that with the staff so that they can um, stay up with current news. So, for example, um, talking about Title I elementary schools and some, some wonderful uh, progress that schools are making and the strategies that they're using. And this is an example of education theme infographics, which is a way of visually representing um, the concepts of, of learning that you want students to get so that they have a visual way of connecting that and uh, coming back to what the learning goals of whatever it is that they're studying. And these are being built and shared all around the world and this is a way to, to access them. So, the easiest way to um, get involved in this and you, you would never have to tweet if you don't want, is you just go to the website, and Firefox works best as a browser for this, and you can just go and look at what's there. See, girls, you're already there. We just took a picture of you singing the Star Spangled Banner, and now you're on the front of our website. Okay? So if you want to open a Twitter account, then you can click on the top there where it says follow Winooski Learns and it will run, th run you through a, uh, an account sign up and then you just have to follow Winooski Learns. And then, pardon? Already following. Yeah, <laughs> and we, we have almost 60 followers now. Students are starting to follow, staff are following. Uh, we follow some of the, um, the folks that we work closely with like Burlington School District, Tarrant Institute, uh, Partnership for Change. Um, and so we're trying to keep it very connected and, and focused to the work that we do locally. Any questions on the, the Twitter feed and application? That's great. I would encourage you to, uh, to follow it. Either check it out on the website or set it up on your, uh, uh, on your phone so that you can uh, look at it whenever you like. Look at that. Mike's already following. <laughs>
you there? Still, 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 still doing that. <laughs> what? Well, once you had it on the page, it says follow, and it has an account. You do. You signed it in in your account. And you were saying you didn't have any music. No, I know how to make an account. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to use it. Yeah. We're going out of focus on learning. I'm going to follow my children after all. Uh, <laughs> catch up. Right. All right. Thank you, Sean. Uh, so, sorry, one question about that, Sean. Are you gonna? Is, is, is this gonna be sort of a school-wide thing? Are you are teachers gonna have training and how to use this in the classroom, or that sort of thing? Uh, eventually. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's uh, keeping it simple. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have teachers who are. Um, showing it to students just by going to the website mm -hmm. and of course we have a, a variability of, of understanding and use of Twitter across mm -hmm. the staff right now so sure. some people are following and they're staying up to up to speed with it um, uh, pretty closely and, and others have never tweeted in their life but, yeah so. well as you do the one-to-one -one thing it'll be interesting to see how students use it and mm -hmm. the interesting Thing too is that they, I mean, you can do it in any language you want. You don't, you know, you don't have to wait for a website to be created in Cambodia or whatever to, to write something in Cambodia. You can write, it, you can post in whatever lang language you want. If you want to translate your uh, Twitter feed, it, ha it has to be in a. You can only translate it in a single language at a time. Right. I, I guess what I'm thinking is that uh, language groups, folks who have access and who care to do so, can react to things that are going on in the community in their own language right. in, a, in a common form yep. on Twitter. Absolutely. Cool. Anything else? All right. Uh, item three, consent agenda. I would accept the motion to accept the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. And item four. Um, likely the discussion topic of the evening here. We left the last time talking about ends. Ends are what is it that we as a community want out of the, as a result of our students going through the school. Mm -hmm. What do we what do we want to have as as their outcomes as an end? Not how do we do it, which we've talked about. That becomes the means, and how do you actually get it done? So, last time we left, we had uh, discussed the depth, I think, of the the statement that we wanted to make. I think uh, Jen, you had kicked it in first, and then. Julian, I think, came pretty close right behind it um, with a proposal that we make a statement about ends, but not detail what those ends actually look like with respect to specific curriculum uh, topics, um, as some of the other examples we had did. So we posted um, the work that we did the last time where we had finished and uh, there were two updates made in the shared document to put a relatively final statement on the end statement or an exclamation point on it if you will and I think we'll start with just reading those two and then I would like to before we get done if we can get to a point where we actually take action to adopt something so the first one that we had in here, I think they both start in the same vein because I think we had ended in the same spot. First one was all students will graduate from the Winooski School District, college and career ready at a cost supported by a majority of the Winooski community. Winooski School District students will lead healthy, productive and successful lives and demonstrate care for their local and global community. The other one was all students will graduate from the Winooski School District and be college and career ready at a cost supported by a majority of the Winooski School District. Those are constants. Winooski School District students will lead healthy, productive, and successful lives. They will be engaged with their local community and understand its place in and links to the global community. So 
Did you change that? Did. Do you, is that somewhere? Did you, did you write that somewhere? Those two were on page three, I believe, of the Google Doc that we've been working with, which is entitled Ends Development uh, 2000. 2000 August 2013. August 2013. There's a J on that second one. Is that because that was my edit? That, that was, yeah, that was, that was yours. Okay. I just wanted to, to kind of keep them okay. distinct, not that that's a big deal. Um, comments and thoughts? Well, unless anyone feels passionately about the second one, I, I think the first one actually reads a little more smoothly. They get both to local and global community, mm -hmm. yeah. which I think is one aspect of that goes well beyond the general science, math, other curriculum but I think it's something critical in our output if you will other thoughts adjustments things we missed the only thing I would ask you is that the I mean they're remarkably similar I think in the first two two pieces the difference I hear is the demonstrating care and engaged with. That was just what I was struggling and with. And what that means. Mm -hmm. And if it's mm -hmm. if it's the difference that you want or I think that everyone demonstrates care so differently and there's something about engagement which just means connection. Mm -hmm. In my mind, like engagement means you are like you've touched it. You're you're involved. sort of in, yeah, you're involved. Um, in whatever capacity or framework you're given to it, but yeah. there's a there's a ignited something about engagement, demonstrating care, or de to demonstrate care. I don't know. Yeah, I, it's true. To demonstrate care, what? It, it seems Positive. vague. To, I mean, it's okay. you know, it's kind. I mean, I think it's kind of what the quote after you know, like kindness. You know, there's a kindness to it. Um, Maybe there's just a little more action in the engagement piece, but but there's there is a it, it, there is a um, a diff, you know there is a, a touchy there's a difference so there's a, a real difference between the two two approaches of it. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think if you had to quantify it, you could quantify engagement somehow. You know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, service, service projects. Service uh, projects. Yeah. How would you demonstrate care? Yeah, I guess it could right. be the same way that if you're engaged, mm -hmm. you care, but mm -hmm. yeah. it's true. Anybody else have any thoughts? Well, about would that be the same terseness of the first one? Because I think the first one is basically the same thing, it's just a slightly more direct to the point. Would it be and, and are engaged in your local and global community? As simple as that. I like with. You know, like engaged with their local and global community because there's this sort of openness. I don't know, as I, you know, like semantics of it does give these um, so, yeah, qualities so, to it. So let me go there for just a second then, uh, because that is probably one of my bigger concerns. Uh, not concern, but is, is one of the thoughts that I've had that I'm trying to get over. And that is the more vague, not the more vague, the higher level less detail we put into an end statement mm -hmm. will later when Sean is going to write up uh, uh, interpretation. interpretation of I interpret this to mean mm -hmm. there are a lot of different places he can and probably will go it'll leave a lot to our understanding did he hit what we had intended mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so when we leave it like this and take out all of the other items that we had, which are you know things like skills of critical thinking and problem solving, and, and actually taking them and putting them in here, that's not something that it will be a specific interpretation of, mm -hmm. right? So, just taking critical thinking out. If we don't specifically put that in there, it's in the graduation expectations, mm -hmm. it's in the handbook, it's in the, the general overall push for where are we going. So I suspect it'll somehow end up in the interpretation, but it won't probably be as listed as critical thinking. 
does that matter if the interpretation can go that broad? Mm. That, I thought the, I thought we went through this last time. Mm -hmm. It is supposed to be. It's not broad. It's what we expect. How he gets there. He he'll give us his interpretations. If they're wrong, then we go back to that working, and we say, okay, that's not what we're thinking. But the overall outcome of what we want is a statement. We want our students to be this, this, and this, and this, without going through the whole thing again. If you add anything more to that, then you limit, and you're putting expectations on something that may not be there for all students because they all learn differently. Mm -hmm. So then you're closing up doors. You want it to be broad so all doors are open and that the administration and the leaders of the school have the opportunity to get to that point of the expectations the way they know how to get them there. For each child. For each student, yes. Mm -hmm. Multiple ways of getting there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If we close that gap by putting in all these subcategories or even just a few, we are not we are closing doors mm -hmm. for them to do that. Mm. Jay, can I clarify? Are you talking about the um, the bullet points? Like the yeah, you, ability to adapt, civic community engagement, that piece? Or are you speaking to the demonstrate care or yes, engagement? Yes, all of that. You want to keep it as broad, right. as Possibly. complete mm -hmm. of this is what we expect of a student coming out of Winooski School District. Mm -hmm. This is what the community wants of our students. How they get there is up to the administration and the leadership to decide because mm -hmm. they know the students more than we do. And most of the, the profession in the yes. community I mean other than if they're the parent yeah. and that's up to them to do it we can't say okay well we want you to do show us this by showing us that they're doing this well not every student may every student critical thinking and problem solving is different mm -hmm. and it might not be to the level that can be measured okay because I had you know you have to measure everything if mm -hmm. you're gonna have proof of it but not all to the same standard necessarily. And, but that's but but, but when comes, you put yeah. stuff like that in there, you're closing that door so that there is an interpretation for the leadership of the school to make those decisions. I, I guess I I had a thought along the same lines, and I don't know quite how this ties in, but the the part of policy governance that talks about the different measurements that we can use, and a report from Sean is one of the ways that we can do it but we can also use external audits or external data and we can also use direct inspection mm -hmm. for things like you know students graduating by whatever method or however you know whatever we decide those pathways are that's a fairly easy thing to externally measure um, and it kind of takes interpretation out of it I think it's really I mean, he can interpret but but there are some specific measurements that are going to kind of guide that interpretation. College and career readiness, I think, is is another thing. It can also be externally measured. Um, and I, I, you know, I don't know. I guess how that ties into either making things too broad or not broad enough. But I know, Mike, in your last blurb, when you sent out the two <coughs> the two things in red and stuff, that one of your things was, you know, how do we measure this? What I believe I saw something in there saying, you know, what you know, what's our measurement or how do we know if this is actually happening and I thought that was a great question it, um, it's a great question but the reality is is every student is not measured the same way absolutely and so think, you can't put it in there specifically mm -hmm. I mean I think the other the other piece of that is it's not ours to determine what the measurement is right that falls to the leadership team. Mm -hmm. is it right. mm -hmm. under policy governance yeah they measure it yeah but, well, we, but we if we, do we, it, if we, we decide we want an external with the progress monitoring reports, we look at their interpretation and then the data that they're showing us to determine that they, that it is being met. And if but it's also the, request further data. Exactly. Or well, or data. the board can we can like and the board does in fact in certain policies require external measurements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, are, are, well, financial mm -hmm. mostly, but it doesn't always have to be that way. I mean, that one kind of has to be right. by law, but. You know, the positive thing on something external is the data is bulletproof, pretty much. If it's, <laughs> it's, if, it's if it's a one and zero measure. Yeah, exactly. Either you met it yeah. or you didn't. Otherwise, right. things like 
And I've got 40 kids graduating this year. We know they can graduate. Their critical thinking skills are on a range like mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we don't necessarily, mm -hmm. the judgment is where they are compared to where they were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And that they've everybody has moved. And so I don't, I think that, and, and that is my, my question about the, the statement of ends only is we will get an interpretation. We will get supporting data. At that point, it's ours, and maybe this is the answer. At that point, it is ours to say, do we agree with the interpretation? Mm -hmm. Does it meet the end statement that we made? Does the supporting data, does the data, is the data what we expected? Not are the numbers what we expected, but is it measuring what we expected? Mm -hmm. and are we showing improvement? Yeah. If the answer is no, we have to go back to the policy. Correct. We don't go into the data and say change this or I want that. It is how do we get it in the policy mm -hmm. so the interpretation is then pulled out. Yeah. That's that's the, the, the next and you're trying, step. You're trying right? to shorten that loop by making sure we got the right level of detail so that we don't have to go back and forth too many times? Is that where you're I, I am asking the question if we, I, I don't, I'm not going to advocate for a lengthened and a detailed and a bulleted mm -hmm. list of things that we want. Mm -hmm. yeah. All I want to know is that you guys are comfortable that the interpretation, when it comes back, will be against this statement. Yeah, right. And the, and the supporting data will be against this statement. Because this statement and is the foundation upon which this all rests. Absolutely. I mean, this is the big deal here. It's yeah. the foundation, yeah. It's well, the, it's the centerpiece. The expectations <laughs> of what students right, will right. have yeah. when, when they, they walk leave out of this building. These doors. Right. Mm -hmm. I, my, my, my hope would also be that we're all going through this for the first time together. Mm -hmm. So that along the way, we're having conversations about, okay, so. Um, Here's some of the data that I would I, I would bring at some point as a discussion item and say here's what I'm thinking about this part of the ends statement that I would use. Give me some ideas about if you mm -hmm. think that's that's uh, um, relevant or yeah. if you have other ideas. So there would be that conversation that happens. It's not just going to be all of a sudden here's Sean's interpretation and here's all the data points that I chose with the leadership team. You know, I, that, that's too much of a big surprise, I think. I think it has to be more collaborative along the way so that when the final report comes out or, or whatever it is, that it's not, not a big surprise. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, more it's, of a process. and it's going to yeah. be a changing a progress, right? mm -hmm. thing. Right. The yeah. ENDS policy changes every, on a, a Right, it's not going to be in cement, right. as Absolutely. we're saying, right. cement, Absolutely. Or cement and, depending and on And I have to say for, for <laughs> me, and this is me because I'm a very different thinker, I think, than anybody else on this board. I'm very good with yes or no, black or white. I don't do so well with shades of gray. And there are and there well and there are right and there are certain things in this like students will be healthy. Well, that's you know that's very subjective and that's nebulous. I think it is too. Do you know what I'm saying? But there are certain things that that you guys have put in there that I think are great. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. but they're very. They're nebulous, all. they're very subjective, they're very open to interpretation, yeah. and everybody's interpretation may be different. Well, and that's okay, but we need to expect that, you know, Sean may come back with some of those things and say, this is what I'm thinking, and members of the board may say, well, that's not what we were thinking. Yeah. Right, yeah. that's why we never quarrel. Yeah. And he may come yeah. back, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, if, if we look at what we're really expecting in this statements there's like there's five elements right so college and career ready mm -hmm. which is like the big one right I mean you can you can write you know books and miles and right. and you know thousands and hundreds of millions of pages on that uh, that's one mm -hmm. leading healthy lives you know it was a challenge but I think I actually think that one's less problematic than productive and successful okay uh, which I'd be very curious to get your interpretation <laughs> on <laughs> those are those are tough you know whereas uh, it, and, and actually, you, you sort of led me back to the, the phrasing that I modified there. Engage with local community is also something that I think we can, we can determine fairly clearly. Mm -hmm. uh, different than care for local and global community because it's tough to put global into the mix immediately as opposed to you know, just understanding the links between your local community and the, and the global community. So, uh, you know, I'd be curious to know, Sean, if this causes you a little bit of anxiety on the vaguer parts of it, like productive and successful, uh, or, if, or if you think this is something that, that would lend itself to some reasonable interpretations. Um, 
it doesn't cause me a great deal of anxiety. Uh, successful, you hit on the one, that's the one that I think, I mean, if you look at the research on success, uh, it's all over the place. Yeah. Um, so I think that that one would be the, the most challenging, but I think it's also uh, an aspiration. So it would be great, it's always great to have conversation about what, what is success, yeah, what right. do we think is success. Mm -hmm. Can we have um, some of our current students, some of our former students come and talk to us mm -hmm. about their lives and the successes, yeah. and is that an indicator? Right. Uh, the rest of it, I feel comfortable with. The college and career ready, that is a national discussion mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. all over the place right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that is really an evolving one. Right. But one that I think we could probably figure out for our own community here, I mean, I, I feel like that one's, that one's one that can, you can certainly draw a line in the sand for, right? Right. Say, here's, here's what it means for us. Yep. Mm -hmm. So a couple of things in listening to your discussions. The global impact that students have is important because of yeah. our population. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of things. And I know for a fact my daughter has friends in other countries just through Twitter and Facebook and yeah, Snapchat right. and all that. Yeah. So I think that, you know, that's important to have because all cultures are not the same. Yep. And every student needs an understanding of the diversity right. and then as far as successful lives I wouldn't consider that to be anxiety more as somebody's success is based on what they want to do as a student and since we're doing a lot of our student-led what they want to do so are they're, they're being taught geared towards what they want to be do to be successful yeah. it's going to look very different for every individual person right. So there may be a child that goes through school that not necessarily wants to go to college, yeah, right. but get some of their college credits so that they have the business aspect or whatever to run their own business. Yeah. You know, so I yeah. think if you don't look at it as a successful billion dollar industry type, because that's really what, you know, it tags with it. Mm -hmm. If you look at it more of just personal success, yes. It's going to be different for every single person, right. and I think that will take a lot of the stress off of how you do show the data for that. Yeah. And I think it's a, yeah. a great word to crack open yeah. about how our, you know, our own certainly American society views success. It's not a one, right. but but we do as a culture sort of paint that narrative and that story about this is successful and this is not. You know, so that the kids can start cracking that open mm -hmm. as they're learning through our school system of, so what is successful for you? Yeah. You know, what does that feel like and what does that look like and what is it, you know, what is it for you? Yeah. And that sort of just opens up the whole. And I think somebody touched on it earlier too. Some of these may be a measurement that's done after the students leave. Mm -hmm. Sure. That's oh, six yeah. months, a year, Absolutely. year and a half. Mm -hmm. right. and, and certainly within it too, as they're preparing for right. the college and right. career ready, but certainly the afterwards towards right. it. Yeah. But it opens yeah. up that whole piece mm -hmm. to measure yourself. To but I think as we learn. as we move forward with the iLab and all of the current changes, you're gonna find kids really do know what they want to do when they leave school. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I mean mm -hmm. once they hit a certain age, they've got it. Mm -hmm. And if they have the tools they need to do that because let's face it there's kids now that are successful still in high school yeah. in I the world I think that that's accurate for some kids I think a lot of kids think that they know I, I agree with that and 100%. Then it depends on how much practical experience in the field and how much so they, time they've yeah. spent but at least even a kid who thinks they know I want to go do this it gives them kind of an anchor to go out into the world and experience and then shift and move and they have those skills while to do they're that. in school yeah. You know? Boy, so there's uh, an element of like self determination in here mm -hmm. that you're kind of hinting at. You know what I mean? What's important is for a student to be able to, to choose mm -hmm. and for a student to choose. I mean, to have sort of an idea, a focus of some sort. And the tool um, bag. And a tool's in their bag to be able to get to where it is they think they want to be. Yeah. Whatever Which is the critical is. thinking, the problem solving, and flexibility, right. and, you know, persistence. Right. Well being. Well, it's almost like we're saying, you know, be able. Or, or put some thought into creating like where you want to end up, a sort of you know vision for yourself. I mean, it's two organizations. Yeah, right. Starting to get back yeah. into memes. At yeah. That point, right? Well, but, but I don't know, but because I think what we're talking about is, is you know, can a student kind of figure out where they want to go? Do they have a direction they want to go in, and then do they have the tools to get there? I mean, really, this is kind of the, at its most basic level. 
yeah, I don't I don't want to creep into like prescribing how that's mm-hmm. done. Right. Uh, well, what I hear you saying is, in my head, I'm thinking all students who graduate from WSD college and career ready via a personalized learning plan, which is in statute uh, and is going to be required, and there's a timeline in place for that already. Right. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Love Stakes are for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, comes, it's it comes already embedded. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. There's a subtext here. Well, then you don't, subtext is you going to write it all about? Right. And then you, don't <laughs> have, then you don't have to get uh, wrapped around the axle on means yeah. by right. putting yeah. in multiple pathways or a personalized right. learning right. plan right. or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then if that changes in a year or two, yeah. you're still relatively covered mm-hmm. because this probably isn't going to change much. How you do it may. Yeah. All right, so I think... Uh, Can I? Yeah, oh, sorry. go ahead. Can we change show to demonstrate? I don't know why. <coughs> or is Where it right good with show? So, so show I, just, I just tried to capture the... You did a great job of that. ...change in the terminology. Oh, we're doing the bottom. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But demonstrate. Demonstrator will be. I don't know. Yeah. What, are, what do you guys You think? could take it out and just say and engage with. Ooh. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. More active construction there. Mm-hmm. Active construction. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Versus passive construction. Engage right. with their local and local, local and. community. Yeah. Well, now yeah. with uh, technology. Yeah. Right. Right. Jen I says. Mean, Jen says yeah, engage with the globe. Yeah. Move Twitter okay. out and. I was, yeah. give, I was giving them an out, but you know, if you want to go ahead and engage. I think it both. was 21st century, I think that's yeah. Cause I think local community matters. Right. I think one of the things that we're talking about here, not saying specifically though, is this should not be something that we can actually meet 100%. Right, right. This should be an aspiration, as mm-hmm. Sean mentioned. Mm-hmm. This should be where do we want to end up? Mm-hmm. And if where you want to end up is only here, when you really should be here, you shortchange yourself. Mm-hmm. Now, does not reaching the exact top matter? It's the progression. Right. And I think right. that's the right. thing that we key on as we move through time. Right. Is how, does that, how does that continue to move? Where's the baseline and where do we move every year after that? Yep. And then but it's a starting point. Do we have the right baseline? Yeah. You know, yeah. Or, or well, we, right. You know, but that's okay. I could be had for certainly not putting in the rest of the detail with that discussion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can. Uh, I, I got. I wanted to ask the question though because it's something yep. that, that I think I'm, I'm more along the lines of, with Jay of getting more ones and zeros than you know grayscale. But it's, I can. I can be it's happy. who I am. That's why you're not. You're wearing a gray shirt tonight, though. <laughs> yes, but it is clearly delineated between the white layers <laughs> and the gray. <laughs> So with that, before we end up in a ditch. Uh, <laughs> Can you read it one more time? Yep, yep, that's where I was going to go. So what I've got then is uh, all students will graduate from the Winooski School District college and career ready at a cost supported by a majority of the Winooski community. Winooski School District students will lead healthy, productive, and successful lives and engage with their local and global community. Cool. Okay, I like it. Yeah. I like it. Short sweet. Subject of change, of course, over time with mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. due process and everything else that we do. But all right, that sounds good then. Wow. Um, so I think in the well done, interest of uh, any other discussion on what and where and okay. So just to recap, so this we we this gets approved. This goes back to the leadership team. You guys do some thinking about this, figure out how to incorporate your annual plans into something that reflects reporting on this. That comes back up to us for the interpretation. Mm-hmm. It's sort of an iterative process between your team, the board, back and forth. Eventually it gets boiled down into a plan of some sort, and then we look at that, and that's that's sort of the, the basis for the yes, discussion. Yes, and, and the, the challenge with that right now is there are many, many plans already yeah. in play. Okay. And so how do we start steering those plans towards this if they're not already yeah. mm-hmm. moving right. in that direction. Huh. Right. And then is is the idea here that, that we would have like annual reviews, semi-annual reviews? How, what, what's the cycle? I think through time the answer is annual reviews, but mm-hmm. I think Sean had mentioned it earlier. As we start moving <coughs> through here, i got to believe we're going to have checkpoints as we go through yeah. every couple of months with yeah. 
you know, we're, we're looking at this. Because I think there's a lot of good things going on in the school right now that fit mm -hmm. directly into here. Sure. Yeah. And so it's just a function of pulling them together to understand is this, does this piece fit? How does it fit? This is a, this is one of the, the uh, measurements or, or metrics that we're looking at using. Does this meet what you think you had in mind? The one that's driven me... The, the one when I started on the board, for the first year and a half or two years, one of the goals was student engagement. And in the package, <clears throat> for all the admin team that brought them forward, there was attendance data, hmm. which basically says, I came to school, I was engaged. Uh, I don't think so. Gotcha. <laughs> I can come to school and be completely disengaged. Right. Right. But so, so that one has bothered me as far as you know what is that interpretation because we never really got back into the the discussion of what is being engaged really mean right right and so i think this is going to sharpen that a little bit and get a little better to that to that point mm -hmm. so. and so this will also be on the progress monitoring schedule piece in a way yes and, but then pieces will kind of show up along the way yeah, and I think what would be important, from my perspective, what would be important is that we, because this is big, there's a lot of elements to it, is that we think about how are we going to look at the elements? Are we going to have one big report where we look at all of them K-12, or are we going to kind of pick the college-ready piece for one presentation, the, the career-ready piece, um, you know, healthy, productive piece, the community, you know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I mean, I always feel like it's better to do smaller pieces and do them in depth Absolutely. than it is to try and mm -hmm. you know, do a thousand things an inch deep. See, and that's where the, all those sublines that everyone came up with will come in handy. Right. Because that's where all of that falls in underneath the ends. Yeah. It is mm -hmm. yeah. so we will, all of it. Yeah. So we'll be looking to adopt an end statement, which will be our ends policy. It will be the 1.0. Mm -hmm. in our policies, which is noticeably missing in the yeah. book right now. It <laughs> right. starts with two. Mm -hmm. It kind of begs the question, where did one go? Well, one, yeah. So we'll incorporate that into one. Um, if, of course, we adopt it, which we'll look at in a second. And then uh, we can, as we move forward, especially over this first year, I think it's going to be crucial to get the, the understanding and the timing. I think breaking it down would make sense. Sean and I can work on that as we do the agendas through, through the year to see where it might fit because that's the one piece, again, in the annual agenda that's a little mm -hmm. bit of a blank right now. How do you incorporate that into an, an annual agenda? Mm -hmm. We can do that when, as we move forward. Any other discussion? Okay, thank you. That was, uh, that was good. So I would uh, accept a motion to accept the ENDS policy as written, as we've ed uh, edited it here tonight. Mm -hmm. So moved. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor of adopting the ENDS policy? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Great. Thank you. And then uh, on to five, which is uh, global executive restraint which is a discussion of financial planning and budgeting on the timetable. Uh, I will turn it to you. Mm -hmm. So if everybody wants to go to 5A of their packet entitled Budget Development Timetable for FY15, mm -hmm. um, I'll kind of go in order and review those docs. Um, so in working with finance director uh, Rebecca Goulet, we developed uh, a timetable and this is based on also our internal um, timetable for um, getting the budget ready so what we're proposing to the board is that November 13th which would be a regular board meeting time at, at the uh, end of that meeting you'd be furnished with a baseline budget and in that within that baseline budget there would be a list of assumptions which if you go to the next page these would be all of the things that would already be incorporated into that baseline so that we're all on the same page with what's in the budget and what's not in the budget. Um, and many of these things are the things that fluctuate year to year or the things that we don't even have a firm number on when we're building the budget, like in a negotiated agreement, 
like health care uh, costs. So we would give you on November 13th that baseline. That baseline budget would not be 50 pages or 150 pages or whatever you have gotten in the past, but it would be a higher level document um, with a function and an object summary so that you could see um, the amount of professional services that uh, we're proposing in the budget across the entire organization. You could see what we're proposing to spend uh, uh, in English and in science um, uh, in the administrative areas, but it wouldn't be necessarily the, the all of the detail behind that. Could we get one with all of that detail if we desired it? You could certainly get it if you so desired. And for a kind of an idea of what that would look like, the next set of documents are what I'm also proposing to give to you for quarterly financial man management reviews. But if you go to the one that is entitled uh, uh, Financial Management Report Expenditures, that would be similar to what you would see in that baseline budget. This is on page four. Mm -hmm. So you'd have the instructional programs, like I said, English, uh, you know, PE, and so forth. Um, and then you would have the instructional support in the administrative areas as the, the large overarching areas and then the detail that you see there. And you would um, have the baseline budget with a comparison of year to year. Um, so you'd have an idea of what things are changing. So then back to the timetable, after you've gotten that, step two would be on uh, December 4th. We would be doing a uh, presentation for you and beginning with mission, vision, ends, uh, which is always important to review that uh, so that we know what the dollars are for and what we are proposing to use them to, uh, uh, the outcomes to meet. We would talk about the significant increases and decreases, if there was any new um, positions, ads, or anything, those would be brought forward at that point with rationale. Uh, I would have uh, support services, student support services director Robin Hood here to talk about special education um, and ELL. And then uh, Rebecca Goulet would also be here to do a presentations on operations and um, IT. So then what would happen we would have discussion and conversation clarifying questions and so forth during that and um, i would take all of that input back and then the following week on december 9th we would come back with a budget that reflects um, the discussion from that first meeting and give an overview of whatever changes have occurred uh, any updated information that may have come our way in the, in that week's time and then uh, the week after that same week on the 11th, we would have uh, preliminary revenue um, and the agency's three-year comparison. So we could start looking at per pu per, uh, forecasted per pupil expect, uh, expense, um, uh, tax impact, and so forth. Then uh, after that, if needed, uh, we would, again, with uh, utilizing all of the discussion, come back with uh, a sharpened uh, third version of the budget uh, mid-December and then uh, the next step would be bringing it uh, uh, to the board in early January when hopefully we have almost all of the numbers that we need as firm as possible um, for an adoption and then step four is all of the, the pieces that we need to do to get it ready for the vote. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. The December dates would we still engage members of the community to sit at the table with us? Yes, I was going to poke a plug for that here. Yeah, so that December that's days. at that time, right there. Absolutely, okay. and I, I would recommend starting November thirteenth. Yeah. I would think at the regular meeting, just mm -hmm. so that they start right okay. at the beginning. That'd yep. be great. And that's why I wanted to get the timetable ahead, so then you, when you call and say, "Hey, will you be my budget buddy?" Here's yeah. the dates and times that we'd like you to be there, because it's important to have the people there at the table for all the meetings, Absolutely. so they get the. So explain that just briefly, uh, because that, that's that's not something we've used in that fashion. The budget buddy, just just to. Um, well, it's something that that uh, um, boards I worked in, with in the past have done, and it is getting a, a community member 
uh, to come and sit through the budget process and that way they learn in depth about the budget and so you're now doubling the number of people who have a, a deeper knowledge of the budget that can go out into the community and talk to their neighbors and um, answer questions that people have in the community uh, about the budget and it's you know it's accomplishing also one of your goals of engaging the community yep. what we've done in the past is sent out a blanket note that says come and join us if you would like and I think we've gotten two or three people and sometimes four. Mm -hmm. I was on. That was before I came on the yeah. board. I was on. There was four. Mm -hmm. But it was it was that of of, a, of just having a different set of eyes. Mm -hmm. We didn't necessarily frame it in terms of a budget buddy, but they certainly were there as extra eyes to say, like, wait, tell me more about this, yeah. or, and just sort of help gauge things. This would force you to go out and at least make sure we've each got somebody that we can say we've now got five, at least five people, mm -hmm. rather than potentially two, three. So we would each four. go out and recruit plus one. anybody that anybody else okay. that wants to come. Right. I mean, you, we wouldn't turn anybody down. So a generic plug <laughs> is for anybody that wants to join us getting the budget prepared. November 13th, regular board meeting will be the first. <clears throat> and the rest of the agenda mm -hmm. is, or the proposed agenda here date-wise is laid out in the uh, agenda items for the meeting tonight. Mm -hmm. So and we will be forthcoming with more information soon. Yeah, but I think it is effective, you know, if you uh, to, you all know people in the community, is to reach out personally uh, and invite somebody and say, you know, we'd like to have you come on these dates and be a part of the whole process. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then you'll always have people who come because they go, oh, technology's going to be on there. I got some questions for that one. But to have those people there throughout the entire process so they can understand it. And they go back out into the community and they say, wow, this is a really – exhaustive important process that we go through to decide how we're gonna support our students okay. Anything? Um, just I'd like just to throw out some input from the VSBA's regional meeting um, because budgetary health care and budgetary concerns were both brought up um, regionally and and they've given us some feedback um, from the state house of what's happening um, Vermont educationally and budgetarily is has been squeezed in the past and they see that pressure continuing um, the VSBA has recommended as much as possible and is recommending to boards around the state that if they can keep it as close to three percent or less as possible they understand some budgets are what they are um, you know some budgets are going to go up quite a bit around the state other ones won't but they're using that as a magical number so I'll throw that out there as feedback from our local or our state um, rep from the Vermont School Boards Association meaning try to cap it at three Keep increase. as close to three as possible because um, they're saying some things are happening in this have happened in the past in the state house and are going to continue to happen um, legislatively to try to control costs um, and we student, did really well last year and we did very well last year we've done well the last probably five years folks um, and Winooski community members you can look around the state if you don't believe that because the data black and white is there <laughs> um, that we have a very reasonable budget um, compared to other schools in Chittenden County and compared to quite a few schools around the state we're very reasonable um, but again, that feedback is there. So ju just to tie that back into our annual agenda and some things that we're doing a little bit differently this year, one of the pieces that we do have in here is advocacy. Mm -hmm. And in our December meeting, we will be inviting our, our state reps in here mm -hmm. to go through some of this stuff. We'll have some information on the budget that night. And so it'll be for our input to them as well as their yep. either feedback or whatever else to us as we go through time. So, it's fantastic. Um, we will have have that uh, in place as we go forward too. So. Okay. Yeah. So are we good with the timetable and the assumptions? Any mm -hmm. questions about those two docs? Okay. Mm -hmm. nope. And just a, a note on the assumptions piece: we are negotiating a couple of other contracts at this point too. So that's kind of a little bit open-ended. We'll have those uh, assumptions work through <clears throat> as we move through time here. Mm -hmm. okay. 
So the second uh, uh, bullet there under global executive restraint is the overview of uh, the FMR docs. So this is the uh, Rebecca and I's first shot at a uh, uh, quarterly review for the board. And so I'm looking for your uh, feedback on this, if it makes sense to you, if it's uh, formatted in a way, if it's at the level of detail uh, that you desire or not. Um, so really the first page is, is uh, the written summary. And it's page three in the document, a PDF document. Yeah. Entitled uh, Financial Management Review First Quarter. And it talks about expenditures and revenues. Um, and really there is where we will characterize any um, fairly significant swings that have occurred that you'll, you would see in the um, charts themselves. But so when you read that first and then you go look at the charts, you'll notice um, those areas. So for instance, uh, right now, uh, our special ed costs uh, have increased over the budget because we've had some students move into the district um, that we're serving. Um, and then on the revenue side, uh, it also talks about that we've had to adjust the revenue for the same reason uh, and some uh, projected shortfall in bank interest and so forth. So the summary here for the general fund and the, uh, the reserve fund, which talks um, about the parking lot project the money that's encumbered there and will be paid or billed. Okay. So as I understand this then, the, the, under the expenditures there is an additional expense based on some students that have moved into the district, mm -hmm. but with that moving in there's also a revenue in Correct. impact because there's an increase in funding. Yes, because of the, the reimbursability the re is, is categorized as a revenue. Right. Okay. I, have, I have a question, Sean. So we will not be getting a TAN for FY14? Nope, that's what I understand. And so with no TAN, I mean, there's no concern about fiscal shortfalls in the beginning of the fiscal year? No, not with the uh, reserve fund that we have. Explain a bit on the tax Well, normally, the, well, you can explain. Yeah. You're the superintendent. Just, just to get the, the, the <laughs> definition on the table and a common understanding, if you would. Um, it's a note to cover any shortfall that you might have at the end of the fiscal year. Correct. Normally, what happens in the district is we get a tax anticipation or a TAN and it's funding for the beginning of it's a very short-term loan it's funding for the beginning of the year before we start to collect money from the ed fund and from the city city collects taxes and the ed fund sends money from the state it's basically startup money to get us going mm -hmm. and then the reimbursements refill the reimbursements uh, refill and pay off the TAN um, so I guess my only question is, so we're okay spending reserve fund money to do those type of... We're not counting on having to spend that reserve fund money, but if we need to, we have it. We have adequate reserve fund. Okay. But that's not in the plan up front. No. You see a path without. Right. Okay. Okay. right. And are the uh, <coughs> increased expenditures and the increased revenues one-to-one, -one, is that just a wash uh, or not quite? No, because uh, special education costs are not reimbursed at 100%. Gotcha. Yeah. So it depends. It, up to the first 50,000 is is uh, somewhere in the 50% reimbursable, oh. and then 50 to 100 is at 90%. Gotcha. Right. So it's a little more red. Yep. So the first page is the summary. The second page is the expense side, broken out as I described before, and it gives you uh, all those different columns with a projected variance to the end of the budget in uh, uh, end of June. And again, that's page four in the PDF file. And then the revenue side on the next page. And then the grants and miscellaneous because we have uh, a significant uh, amount of money in the budget with the grants that we receive. I like this layout. It makes it really yeah. clear. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. I do. In terms of revenues, expenditures, grants. Yep. And then the last piece is the uh, reserve account. So you would get this packet quarterly. So 
<clears throat> now the, the money is going to, the extra money at the end of the fiscal year is going to start being voted by the community, whether it goes into the reserve account or back into the school? My understanding is we will generate a list of items to put on the ballot of options to, of things to do with that money. And then folks will vote on what they want to do. Is that for all that. of the reserve account, or is that just going new, forward? New funds moving new funds. forward. So this right. projected balance is not that included in that. Right. That would be the balance at the end of FY13 that we would be looking at. And I believe it was somewhere in the neighborhood of $100,000. Right around 100 yes. So at some point along the way between now and February, probably January, just to keep it off the end, we have to come up with a list of what are those things that we would want to put on the ballot as options for that money, because you can mm -hmm. roll it into the, fund, the next year's budget. We can put it in a reserve fund toward things like uh, a boiler mm -hmm. study or things that we know we got big expenses coming within the next four to six years or something. But that the we're public still needs ready to for. approve that, right? That if the public, absolutely. To, to do that and and you know that would be something that would be you know looking forward rather than having to pull a bond out for you know a million dollars to do the mm -hmm. boiler work do we do that and you know do we do something like that yeah. so and so one mm -hmm. of the things we do during the budget cycle is we have a, a maintenance plan and we right. had an audit done uh, um, recently and so we would bring to you the priority list and the costs associated with that and so then you're you would consider those and decide, you know, do we want to do some of these, all of these, none of these, and and or do we want to use some of that money for another purpose? So, I guess I'm confused then because I thought we did that last year with the budget. We had set aside money that we, we pulled stuff out of the budget to ensure that the reserve account was going to pay for like unit ventilators. That's correct. Um, I'm looking at some of the stuff here on this list. Mm -hmm. Have they been done? Because the money th from the reserve account last year was supposed to pay for those things, the parking lot project being one. That's all I see here as an expense, but I thought we were having the unit ventilators. Was it the unit ventilators? We being? had some work on the unit ventilators done last year, but in I believe they finished they, JFK. They have finished JFK uh, and the middle school, I believe, were both done. That's correct. So that was done at the end of last year. They did some work in the I thought they gym were doing for the it safety. Past summer. They did, but in this report, it's probably it's it's, it's passed. passed. It's, and I believe it's already come on a previous. So then it's report. already been pulled out. This is what's left. Yes. Yes. Right. Correct. That's yeah. what I want to make yes. sure. Yeah. Right. And some of those projects may have been able to been done at the end with when you have a, a, a clear idea of what your balance is going to be. You can sometimes do some of those smaller projects in May and June in uh, last year's budget. Okay. So, any other feedback on the on the FMR format information? Comfortable with that? Um, um, uh, well, well, any other thoughts? I think it lays it out fairly clearly with the expenditures and the receipts, the grants. Shows where you are in relation. Yeah. So. Okay. So I think that's. Uh, I think that's a nod that the the format works. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, does better for my head than 50 or 60 pages, at least for, <laughs> for what I need. All right. Good. Anything else? Not for me. All right. Uh, so item six then is a discussion on uh, the board job description. Uh, 
creating and maintaining written governing policies that realistically address the broadest levels of all organizational decisions and situations. This was uh, uh, I'm going to take that discussion. Yeah. Yeah. So this came out of last month's discussion um, about how do we change a policy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if we come upon something and we say hmm, we really want to review this policy and. and check it out and see if it's really what we want it to, to look like. And so, um, I don't know what page number that is called, but you have a document that has a list of all of our policies on it and with its numbers and then the last time that the board approved those policies and starting with the oldest policies and moving towards the more, more current ones. So what I'm suggesting is a uh, recommending is a, a policy review cycle that you start with the oldest ones and you can decide how many policies you would like to kind of pick off per meeting and you would have a, a first reading of that policy get it in your agenda packet and have some discussion you'd have a public hearing so it'd be available for the public to come and weigh in on the policy uh, and then at the following meeting, you would, um, after incorporating the public hearing information and any input that the board has on their, their first reading, um, there, would be an, there would be adoption. So this is for the required policies, mm -hmm. not the, the um, uh, policy, policy governance, governance policies. So right. these, these, these this the is the list of the required ones from the state. We did a lot of work over the last two years in trying to clean 11, some of those up. The policy Let's governance see. piece. So one of the one of the questions with this um, quantity, and you know, Julian, you hadn't seen it. Basically, we just read down through the policy, discuss it. Uh, Sean will bring in legal requirement update, require legally required updates already incorporated. Uh, we'll review it to see if it meets what we still need. Mm -hmm. Lines up with the legal requirements. Now we'll come back for a second reading and an approval, and then for all of these. So, uh, sure. just guessing, there's what 25 uh, yeah, that without counting down through them. Um, the question is going to be on what review cycle annually, every two years, every three years, mm -hmm. would make the most sense to hit these with. Mm -hmm. with uh, We'll call it a dozen meetings a year just because you can work around the July one that we may or may not have. Mm -hmm. uh, every two years is throwing in one policy in every meeting. Mm -hmm. So you've got about, you've got 27 policies there. And so with a three year cycle, you cut that back to having some months because you're going to have to have a reading mm -hmm. and a review and then an approval. So if you do a two, if we do a two-year cycle, it'll be a reading and a review of one of these required policies pretty much every month, mm -hmm. unless you want to double and triple them up and take the time to do that. I imagine some of these are going to be pretty quick, and others are going to take a little more time. Yes. Right. I mean, they're not all right. right. Ten-minute discussions or something like that. Right. And one of the one of the, the helpful uh, pieces from BSBA is that they have model policies. Oh, okay. So what I would be doing when uh, sending you the policy in your agenda packet, you get a copy of a model policy too, so you can kind of do a comparison mm -hmm. in addition to if there's any uh, legal updates that need to be incorporated. Okay. Um, there are also some of these policies that I believe are required to be reviewed more frequently. Then, oh, you mean just than others? Mm -hmm. Parental involvement, I believe, at least, at the very minimum, needs a parental review annually under Title I, Section 1118. Yep. Hmm. So whether so, that so has to come before the board at the same time, because technically we're supposed to review that policy with the involvement of parents, so mm -hmm. which some of us on this board are parents, so we would automatically qualify but it does talk about annually, so there are more requirements than just us setting dates for some of the, I think that's the only one that I know of. You, Sean, you know mm -hmm. of any others that have more frequent cycles? I don't know of any others off the top of my head, but I could definitely check that out and, uh, with the SBA. I would say we others. need to get those first few done 
sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, first yeah. five. First five. Especially yeah. the first one. Six. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, different world. And then I would base it on the agenda for the month. What there is there already. Yeah, like if you have a late agenda, put a couple on it that need to be up. So yeah. 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 If we're going to say annually, then every year we look at them and say, okay, this one, this one, this one needs to be reviewed this year and implemented throughout the year based on the agenda. Yeah, so I was just looking at in the agenda, there are there are spots to be able to do that as we go through. So And correct me if I'm wrong, and, and maybe we want to, we've always done two readings on a policy, but I believe by law we're only required one reading. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, things in my eyes, and I could be totally wrong here because I don't know the rest of the members of the board that well, but things like animal dissection, how much are we going to change that? I, I mean, and we may, but I know there are certain requirements under state law, but that's kind of a, you know, I hate to say we're rubber stamping it, but by the same token, what really is going to change in that? Well, I think that the one piece, and I think that the argument for some of these going annually is if there are any legal requirement changes, that should be the mm -hmm. BSBA will probably help get us to the point where you can you know, mm -hmm. pretty quickly identify which ones those are. And then the changes are pretty much directed as to what you need in there. Mm -hmm. So so it sounds like we would have sort of a regular slow cycle and that in the middle of, like say that three-year cycle, that, that's an appealing number. Uh, and then in the midst of that cycle, we would have things that would bubble up to the top a little more quickly. So things that changed uh, that the VSBA would give us a notice about and also things that require more frequent review like like the one you mentioned. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess the third criteria would be just something that, that needs some reviewing either because of the, the, the age of the thing or uh, because of the topic. Or right. current right. circumstances. Current circumstances right. and contextual things. So, yep. um, so legal changes frequent review by a statute requirement and right. then statute rather, and then uh, and then sort of contextual uh, stuff okay I mean I, I guess I feel if we feel as a board we need the time to go through several readings I mean we've gone through as many as three readings on a policy before we've you know we've had some we've really hashed out but there have been other ones that were just like okay that's done it's done because it's all based on a state or a federal requirement. Yeah. There's not a whole yeah. lot of changes we're going to make to it. Yeah. And, and I think one of the things yeah. we keep track of with the number that we do have here is what was that time? So the second time around, it was, you know, can we knock these off in two years and yeah. hit them, touch them more frequently, which makes sure you are, in fact, there. Right. If it's a, if it's a read and a read and approve, you know, yeah. there's probably half of those that we can get through in one meeting if we really pushed. Yeah. So we'll keep an eye on that as we go through maybe just another column in your mm -hmm. table to, you know, on efficiency with the particular ones. But so so who, okay. would, who so would put them up for discussion? Would it be you or would it be Sean? I think we'd do that together. We set it right. up in the agenda. Right. So you guys would eyeball it depending on how much time we have and according to those priorities yeah. that we talked about. And then well, what I would suggest is maybe for next month what we do is at our agenda planning we do that and we bring back the the cycle mm -hmm. to the board for you to look at and you know give the go ahead that says here we suggest yep. these with these you know these dates and over these the course means. of these three years and this is why mm -hmm. you know we chose these this yeah. one has to be and annual this one yeah. and oh by the way access to electronics hasn't been done in 13 years right <laughs> the way things are changing we'll probably tackle that one yeah that's <laughs> remarkable <laughs> That's a really significant. Okay, so we can we can definitely do that. Doing them all in one year, some of these are going to be end up being a little older than others by the time we start to get to them. Yeah. But mm -hmm. we, yeah. we hopefully can get on that cycle where there's no more than three years old. So everybody yeah. okay with a, at least up front a three year cycle? Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's so we can find out reasonable. what, what the we VSBA have. recommends no more than five. Yeah. So if you're under five, we're and, and again following statute changes and stuff like that. If you're under five, generally you're pretty good. When we had eighty, five years was a daunting task. Oh yeah, unbelievable. So yeah, that right. we're a little better under control. And we've got obviously the policy governance ones that we got to work with too. But right. those I think we've got a handle on at least how we're going to move forward with those. So. Well, and with three-year cycles, if 
you know, for whatever reason the agenda gets loaded for a particular meeting, you can bump it to the next one and it's not the end of the world. So I think three years makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. Good. So we will put that together in a uh, plan on how we would think that that might move forward best. All right. Um, 6B, I had it put uh, previously in here under the governance processes, actually under the annual agenda, the VHI and the BISBIT, the proxy and certificate of authority. That was in the model that I had used, so I left it in there, and it is... Did, uh, you, did you guys, Mike, could you just show that thing on the... Did, did bo the board members, did everybody get one of these? Jen, I gave you one at the game. Yeah, I had it. But yes. yes, that was from the regional meeting. So, um, and I don't know where you're going with Visbit or VHI, Mike, so I'll, I'll stop talking. But Thank you for just, me. you know, feel free to peruse through that. And um, you know, it's some very good information. It was an unbelievable meeting. Um, and a lot of times our regional meetings have a certain amount of fluff. This one was not the case. Um, the amount of information that they gave us in two and a half, three hours was unbelievable. Hmm. Um, I mean, I was overwhelmed, and I eat that stuff right up. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it was really good. This is definitely worth reviewing, um, and it's something that's going to be a, a very hot topic in the near future. Okay, so this has got all Thank the you. PowerPoint and yep. <clears throat> other items. Okay. Good. Thank you. So uh, having that, uh, Sean, and I thank you for, for doing that. There were a couple of uh, a couple of items that needed some uh, attention for uh, the proxy or certificate of authority for both VHI and the insurance trust and Bisbet. And uh, I think if I understood these correctly, this is uh, who we will have as a uh, authority on, or not an authority, but a, a contact. And I see Mary's uh, name listed here, so uh, I will look through the rest of this and then and figure out what the what the details are. There's it, a lot of yeah. I think it's either here. when you whether you want to have a uh, designate a, a particular person to go and vote on behalf of the board for both in, at both of those organizations' right. annual meetings. Or you want to proxy the board of the particular organization to. I think in the past, the, the reason why it hasn't come is we've done the proxy in the past and mm -hmm. let the, the governing body work through it. Um, they, they elect a board of directors and, and everything else as they go through. The, both meetings happen to be in Lake Maury while we're there for the VSBA conference mm -hmm. at the end of October. Yeah, it happens every year. So. I've never been to the Visbit VHI meeting because a lot of times. It happens during the board's annual meeting down there. So mm. the superintendents usually go to the VisBit thing and the school board members go to the annual meeting of the school board. Yeah. And I haven't seen, I mean, I haven't had, we haven't had any that I know of real issues with either of the two. No. So it's it's seems to be run real well at this point. So, we'll, so that was it that was included in the annual agenda it's always good i think to at least just bring it up to does everybody know know what visbit and vhi is nope. visbit is um it's a insurance trust um that was developed some years ago that a lot of schools use for their insurance needs simple um vhi is actually a sort of an arm of VisBit, and, and, and I hope I'm being accurate with this, but it also has, that board of directors has um, representatives of boards and elected uh, people, but it also has members of the union as well. And that comes out of some years ago, there was a lawsuit about you know the unions being involved with their insurance. So when you see things come from VHI, it's basically been blessed by both organizations, which is really, really kind of neat. It's been very collaborative and very cooperative over the last 20 years or so. VHI is a Vermont Education Health Initiative. That's correct. That's the, 
and the Bisbet is the insurance trust. That's that correct. That Dave mentioned. So we do all of our, I believe all of our insurance through Bisbet. Right? Yeah, right. I do believe so. Yep. Like all insurance, all like not, we're not talking health insurance. We're talking liability and. Well, there. No, health and dental, medical and dental. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. 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 So that, well, that's sort of. There must be some stuff going on down there these days that's pretty interesting in terms affordable of the care conversation. Act. Yeah. Well, that's what yeah. that's what this was all about was yeah. the Affordable Care Act, right. and like I say, it's you know I'll I'll stay out of the weeds for what it means to everyone under negotiations. Mm -hmm. I won't mention that, um, but um, there are major changes coming, yeah. um, and what's going to happen and how that's going to affect everybody really still to this day is uncertain unknown it is unknown so cost up cost down nobody knows nobody really knows Man, interesting. and that was after three and a half hours they told us that <laughs> i mean i walked out of there and i walked in i thought oh boy i'm gonna learn all about the affordable care act and they gave me tons of information and it was helpful um but i walked out with really not knowing it's still evolving you know, and it's still evolving for schools and it's still evolving for businesses and nobody really knows what's going to happen here. Mm -hmm. So, time will tell. <laughs> All right. Any other discussion? Um, piece. Okay. Uh, community engagement. Last time we had talked about leaving a portion of the agenda to have a brief discussion of things that we've done with within the community um, as we've moved through the past month so just uh, I think a, a brief example one would be uh, the iLab uh, approval acceptance uh, cycle meeting that we had it was good to see I think there were at least 30 30 kids 35 kids mm -hmm. uh, come parents uh, listed the, all the projects that the kids were working on. For, for those that don't uh, recognize it, the iLab is uh, an individualized course description uh, that kids are working on. I want to learn more about this. Um, and there are a wide range of, of items to, to look at. Just, just as a very brief, by way of brief example, uh, the senior project, I'm sorry, the senior project is something that we've had in place for a long time. And it requires the kids to go out and do some research, get community engagement, get involved with the community. Uh, my son is interested in two paths he would like to pursue, uh, but he's not sure exactly which one yet that he would like to, to go after. One is in business and the other one is in law. So a senior project, he's focusing on the business end of it <clears throat> to take into a good in, into the community to talk to folks about you know some aspects of that. In his iLab, he's actually researching law, different types of law, going out and seeing different types of lawyers, hopefully shadowing a, several different ones or at least having a chance to sit down and talk with them about their career um, and their views so that he can now have a view of, of both. So that's just one avenue for this iLab. It, there are uh, items in art, photography, but all of it requires research. And a key one is there are course requirements in it also. Right, right. Like my son's going to end up having to write a paper and do the research. No, so I mean like credit. Like there's, you can design your own English class. Right. And your own uh, social studies. Is that what they call it now? Mm -hmm. Social studies class. Yeah. And the students are able, if they're not finding that core class in their schedule, they are able to go into the iLab and with the help of the teachers create what kind of English class they're going to take and have the plan set in place of the books and the projects and it involves community um, internships and I mean it's a, but it's for that major course requirement. Hmm. So pretty interesting. It's, it's very interesting. Anyway. It's, it's great. Work. It was great. To be, I went there. I was there too and it was awesome to see the enthusiasm of the students and the, just the I don't know what the right word is, the ownership and, you know, the, they own it and they're proud of it and they're very excited about it, which is awesome to see for students. Yeah. 
Especially high school engaged. students. Back Very to the engagement engaged. piece. They're Very not only here. You they ha- and you know what? <laughs> to be in the it's iLab, tangible. you yeah. have to show engagement or you won't be accepted. Mm-hmm. So, huh. I mean, it's huh. really based on student engagement and showing that they are serious about doing this on their It's Because it's a lot of it is... Self-directed, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. right, and not everyone is a great self-director. So. Well, they have to be approved, right. and they have to yeah. show the initiative, or they don't continue. Yeah. yeah. So there's a certain point where they, it just either moves forward or it doesn't. So yeah. Great. It was a, it was a good night to see oh, all the parents, uh, yeah. involved too. So that was one item. And even students right. came without their parents. Hmm. Yep. So I know a few students that were here without their parents. So that was awesome to see. I think they got credit. <laughs> <laughs> some things you have to, some things you have to work with. Uh, Incentives. Uh, we have a PAX meeting coming up month? October seventeenth. Okay. Yep, district this wide. Be the first one. First district one. Okay. Yes. Nine. Six to nine. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Anything? Any others? Right. Did anyone go to the dinner? I, the partnership for change. Yeah, yeah, I did. How was that? I did. Sean was there. Yeah, it was right there. It was, it was kind of. It was small, certainly compared to others, but mm-hmm. there was still a good turnout. It was. Yeah. 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 There was something else happening. <laughs> I went to the I had parent meeting. Mm-hmm. Was that the same night? You know, that was during a Saturday afternoon. Mm-hmm. How was that? It was good. Mm-hmm. It was very informational. The kids, again, very engaged, very excited, can't just wait. I'm just sweet. like, it's good. awesome. It's awesome what they can do with it. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it touches that global right. community, you yeah. know. It's really awesome to see what they can do with those mm-hmm. things. So there's another community dinner coming up next week, right? Yeah. Anybody interested in going? Should we tag it out? Is that what we do here in the community engagement piece? That's what we said we were going to do. Divvy out. Divvy yeah. <laughs> out jobs. <laughs> yeah, at least get it out into the... Is that the 17th? 16th. 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 Which is... Wednesday, next Wednesday. Oh, it's on Wednesday. Okay. At the... Um, is there a subject or a topic on... A, a sponsor group? I don't. S- I don't have it in okay. front of me. Is is that available sure. from who was it? Kate Nugent. Yeah, yeah. she's the, the one who organizes them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it usually shows up on the front page. Right. Okay. Let me okay. see if I. I'll get a note off it's to at Kate the school, right? tonight yeah. just to see if uh, where the one at the school or the one at the O'Brien Center. The O'Brien Center. O'Brien Center. It's at the O'Brien That's where they've been having them. I can send Kate a note just to find out. Not that it uh, matters, but I see if we can find out the subject. All right, good. Anything else? All right, any items for the next agenda that might be outside of or in addition to whatever our next agenda might be? Uh, Negotiations. Uh, yes, we have uh, uh, an initial uh, interaction with that coming up at some point with uh, okay. both both groups. But we'll set that schedule to figure that out. So are we going to appoint a committee, or what well, we we've got a negotiating committee from the, that which we appointed in March. That'll, yeah, that'll is go that until was that? Ju- I thought that was just for teachers. No, nope, this is a negotiating committee depending on who's nego- of what negotiations have well, to happen. That's never the way we've done it in the past, but... Oh, really? I thought our committees were the year-long assignments. No, they, they're them? specific to... It's been in the past, and, and I don't care if, if you two guys do it, but it's always been specific to the, to the task. We've had separate ones for the IAs and the teachers. Okay, I, I had made the assumption that we were going to go with the committees that we adopted in March, and they were a year. I mean, it doesn't time. matter to me. It's just there are two types of committees under Robert's rules. There are standing committees, and then there are special committees. The difference between the two, and the reason why school boards really don't have standing committees, is board turnover and, mm-hmm. and new board members right. and everything else. So you're constantly 
once with a special committee, once the task is complete, the committee automatically dissolves. Right. And that would be the negotiations for the year. That, that was my interpretation. It would no. be for the, for the I don't, negotiations I don't know. that happen. I, I know when we originally term. appointed, I, I just remember negotiations. I don't remember teachers or right. IAs or anything else. Right. I thought we redefined this at our annual board meeting when we um, appointed Mike for partnership with the steering committee, that we sort of had the review of who was doing what, and we were all kind of in agreement on that. That, that, that's a mar was that was our March. Meeting, right? When our no, members, I'm talking about the ARC in August. August yeah. We, we went and over the a, list and so we looked at who had, who had what and that we right, were sort of, you know, making sure we did But when we specifically feet. appointed committees, did sure. we appoint them to do all negotiations or was it negotiations for teachers or was it negotiations? I thought you know it was negotiations saying? for teachers and then it seemed to me, right. that's my remembering of it, and then it seemed to me that as um, someone wasn't available, there was always a sub. Right. And then we just sort of revisited, are you still in right. for that? Or and that's not? what I'm saying. Teachers and support staff are different different bargaining groups. That's why I'm oh, asking totally, the question. Oh, totally, but it was still a I just saw it under the negotiation umbrella. Okay. Well, I, don't, I don't recall that. Yeah. That's not the way. Well, we can have a discussion about that next month, I suppose. Well, don't any. we need to I think, gonna yeah. I think we're going to be starting. Yeah. I think we're going to be starting here pretty quick because they've already given us a letter of so to so negotiate. are we going to discuss in executive session what our strategies are no nope, that's not no, uh, we're tonight's deciding, discussion i thought the discussion i mean just making sure we're confirming who was, who was going to be team. on the team right i thought that was what you're asking yeah right but but even that team gets direction from the rest of the board as far as how we're going to proceed in negotiations correct so can we define can we just all agree on, or i don't know if we have to vote on but can we just keep the team that yeah, I, mean, I don't. I don't care. I'm and just. Was it you and Mike? No, it's that's me. where. Yeah, oh, right. you two. You two. Yeah, yeah and I think right. the team's fine. All right, let's go for it. Let's stick with that. You did a great job. So the. the teacher got dressed. Okay. So there's no action there. That is just. Right. That is continue agreeing. I mean, we continue. Yeah, I just I wanted an interpretation of because like I say we've never done that in the past. And so then the next cool. step is then. Strategy. 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 And Which and we'll and in all and in all fairness, in the past. The negotiation cycles have been two and three years apart and recently under the last negotiations we did the year changes where they became within the same year or close to within the same year so that's why so that's why you're you're having this thing where they're, they're both coming around mm. the same time or one's just finishing up and another one's getting ready to start so Jay you are are you the alternate then were you the alternate I was originally. So you're still okay. going to be? So that'll be. Yeah, that's fine. I don't care. Whatever you guys want. Doesn't I can't anything. do it. Huh? I can't do it. Well, and that's a question I had. Can you she can't? do it? No, no, oh. I cannot. Oh. Not of being a teacher. No. I, th I think we had talked about our. Yeah. Our because this is these are support staff. Uh, a little matter. bit different. Don't worry. I don't. I think you yeah. guys are way better. You don't need to worry about. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Whatever you guys want. <laughs> no hat in a ring. Still. Well, we still need a backup, so. Okay, fair enough. Okay. All right, so you guys are the lead team, you're the alternate? Yep. And, and so I think I'll ask, I'm a little off uh, off base with the agenda here, but I'll add the contracts are on the, on the school site. Mm -hmm. if, mm -hmm. if you can, just go in and, and review. Okay, do it. okay. See if there's anything in there. I've asked Sean already to get with the leadership team and look through, understand what what's there and because the first meeting usually is just setting up the rules and timeline timelines and okay. stuff so we don't need so, so you're the not, next meeting we can I do think, our executive session and get the input of okay. where we're going and where we're headed and where we're headed yeah. fair enough and when's the first meeting sir? um mike uh i'll have to i can get that i'm not even 100 percent sure we've actually scheduled the first one I can right. do it if you want me to. I yeah. can contact them. We've been we've been contacted already. So who, who have they chosen right. for their negotiator? Um, I can look it up. Hold on. I have an email. Karen. Is it Karen? Karen Green. Karen Green.
it was distracting. Oh, no. so. <laughs> When the pause, check out the pictures. I don't know if we know. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we've got an area. I'll, That's we'll, fine. We'll yeah. nail that down and no in November we'll look through and kind of part of our executive session will be uh, those items. On November? In November. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you for that one. I had uh, slipped. That one had slipped. So the self evaluation. Um, yes. This will be. <clears throat> this will be four or five that I've collected. So if you can date it, please, so I can get the chronological order um, on those. I don't. The top doesn't fit on there. No names. I do. No. no names. No names. Just no dates. I'm going to put your name on mine, Mike. <laughs> uh, uh, constructive feedback is always welcome. And obviously, that's welcome at any point in time. <laughs> I don't think you guys are too bashful about giving. So. Can I tweet it to you? <laughs> I, it may take me a while to get it. So. i got to get a smartphone first. I'm uh, fighting. No, you don't, man. you got a computer. You don't need yeah, a smartphone to do it on Twitter. It reminds me of, oh, I can't go there. Now, when you say the meeting was well attended, are you referring, <laughs> <laughs> you referring to board decided members? By, I think we decided last time it was by board members. <laughs> okay. Yes. All the counter forms. <clears throat> that one we should be able to pass with flying colors. Mm. I got distracted by tweets. Is that okay? Mm. As long as you're open about it. Some of the ones at the bottom here, we're going to have a little trouble getting to some of it. So, Who are the owners in the one that talks about the board spends most of its time debating, defining, and clarifying its vision and in linking with its owners and public as opposed to fixing things? So that is a, a view toward the community rather than in toward running the school. Mm -hmm. But the owners are the public? Is that one and the same? Owners, owners would be, would be not stakeholders. They would be taxpayers. Um, they would be community owner, or community members. Um, in that particular instance, staff wouldn't be con staff would be considered part of the stakeholders, stakeholders, but they're not part of the owners. Hmm. So there is a tiny bit of a clarification between the two. So what is the difference between owners and public? Mm, not all members of the public, I would think, lives necessarily live in Winooski. <coughs> Most do, but not all. I think the key, the key piece there is, is how are, are we looking at things with a view to what we want out rather than mm -hmm. how we're getting things done. Right. So. Gotcha. I think you know, the one in here, one of these items that touches a nerve for me is that uh, board uses less than 15% of the meeting time monitoring past performance yeah. and we've typically historically we got mired into the past mm. and determining how how to run things and 
the discussions we've been having are very different from where we had been. And I think it's, it's refreshing to look forward rather than backward. Because I'm certainly not a teacher. and can't certainly speak for all of us. But um, to take the focus out of how you do it mm. rather than what we want done mm. has been refreshing for me. Mm. So. Mm. Good. Okay. Um, we do have uh, tonight an executive session. I have two items to cover. So I would uh, accept a motion to enter executive session. So moved. Second. 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 Okay. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Aye.